Alexander Fleming and the Discovery of Penicillin by Farsix J. Alexander Fleming was looking for ways to destroy bacteria. In 1928, he was growing lots of bacteria known as staphylococci on agar plates. Alexander Fleming was a bit untidy. He sometimes left lids of plates for a long time, letting the air in. Before going on holiday in 1928, Alexander made two mistakes. He didn't put all of his plates in bleach to sterilise them and he left the lab windows open. When he came back from a holiday, Alexander noticed that lots of his culture plates were mouldy. A common mould that had grown happily on a slice of bread had landed on Alexander Fleming's plate. A stroke of luck would save millions of lives. Just before he put all the plates in the washing up to get clean, Fleming noticed something. Although lots of bacteria were growing on his plates, there was a clear ring of jelly around some of the spots of mould. No bacteria were growing. Something had killed the bacteria that were covering the jelly. Straight away, he saw this might be important, so he labelled and saved the plate. Fleming called the mould penicillin tartan. He squeezed out some juice from the mould, which was called penicillin, but he couldn't get much penicillin from it. It wouldn't keep, even in the fridge, and he couldn't prove that it would actually kill bacteria and make people better. By 1934, Fleming gave up on penicillin and went to do different work. In 1938, Howard Florey and Ernest Chain at Oxford University decided to do some work on penicillin. They infected eight mice with bacteria which would normally kill them. Four were given penicillin. The four treated mice stayed healthy but the other four died. They went on to treat Albert Alexander, a 43-year-old policeman dying of a blood infection. They gave him penicillin for five days and Albert was well on the way to health again. And when the penicillin ran out, Flory and Chain tried everything but the infection came back and he died. They didn't give up. They collected more penicillin and used it on a 15-year-old boy who had an infection after an operation. He was completely cured. They showed the value of penicillin in destroying bacteria. The next problem was making enough of it to supply the demand of the soldiers in World War II. In Britain, all the big factories and laboratories were busy with the war effort, so the scientists took their mould to the USA, where some of the big chemical companies helped them make penicillin on a large scale. Penicillin became a va available to everyone, and the history of infectious diseases changed forever. Thank you for watching our video on penicillin.